All praise to the Most High, brothers and sisters. Uh, so tonight's topic is called the individual lights. The individual lights. That's tonight's topic. Okay. Let's. Um, I'm gonna open up with a definition. Okay. Um, read that definition from Evan Dictionary. Individual light. Read that. The definition of individual light. Mm -hmm. An individual person. A what? An individual person. An individual person. So an individual light is an individual person. Go ahead. We're going to deal with that in a second. Keep going. One who talks, mm -hmm. dresses, and acts as they wish to. You see that thing? It says one who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. That wish to goes into how they feel, as they feel. Go ahead. And as one and has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. Now read that definition again. Read it again. The definition of individual light. Mm -hmm. An individual person. One who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. And has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. Now, this is the this is this 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 behavior right here, it happens within and without. You understand? It happens within the body and without the body. Now, our people out there, this is the spirit they have. But there are some spirits within that they have the same spirit. You understand? It says an individual person who walks, dresses, and acts as they wish to, and has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. Now watch this. Let's get the definition of individual. Okay, read that definition, individual. The definition of individual, mm -hmm. adjective, single, separate. You see that thing? An individual is a single or a separate person. They are single and they are separate. You understand? We was just dealing with the black queens, okay? That they are the, their, their mindset, they have a mindset of an individual light. You understand? They are single and they are separate. Okay, read the, the synonyms. Synonyms. Mm -hmm. Single, separate. You see that? Single, Dis separate, go ahead. Discreet. Discreet, go ahead. Independent. Independent. You see that thing? An individual, an individual light, they are independent. You understand? But they are not really independent in the, in, the, in the proper use of the word. They are not because they are still dependent on the systems around them for them to function. So are they autonomous? Because the, the, the true definition of the word independent, that means you're autonomous. You understand? You are self-reliant. Everything that you need is, done, is not coming from outside is coming from within you're autonomous you understand so an individual light they have the illusion of ind being independent you understand they are separate they are single discreet if you if some of you if you've studied um, you've done math and all of that um you've got two branches of mathematics one is discrete mathematics another is continuous mathematics continuous mathematics goes into calculus and all that you understand? Dealing with continuous stuff, things that are continuous. In discrete, you are dealing with isolated things. Discrete mathematics goes into things like linear algebra and all of that. Yes. So discrete, it just means isolated. You see that? So you've got discrete, independent. Go ahead. Soul. Soul, read. Lone. Lone, come on. Solitary. Solitary, go ahead. Isolated. That's the part right there. You see that part right there? Isolated. So an individual light, they are isolated. You understand? And not in a good way. No. Not in a good, but they have convinced themselves that they are, in, they are independent because they are now, they say independent, individual, separate thing. They are all synonyms. You understand? All of which today, the black woman is number one, an effeminate black man. And effeminate black men 
and black men who hate order, law, and structure. You understand? They fall under this category, but they only have the illusion of being an individual light, but they, because they still depend on external factors for them to function. So they are not, in the, they are not independent. They just have the illusion of being independent. Okay, watch this. Give me the book. Hmm. Let's go back to the. Let's go back to the old definition. Read individual light again now. The definition of individual light. Mm -hmm. An individual person. One who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to, and has and stands up for their own opinions with mm -hmm. no regard to what the majority is doing. Now we're going to break that down. Okay, watch this. Now we're going to just deal with in the individual. Individual. Watch this. Give me Jude. Give me the book of Jude, verse 19. Jude, verse 19. Watch this. Jude, verse 19. Read that. Jude, verse 19. You know what? Start of verse 18. Start of verse 18. Jude, verse 18. Mm -hmm. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Mm -hmm. who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. You see that thing? It says they, they should be mockers. When? In the last time, meaning in the last days. In the last days, you're going to have mockers. You're going to have scoffers. Those that don't believe the word. They don't believe the word. They don't fight to preserve this word. They don't fight to apply this word. You understand? Read that again, verse 18. Jude, verse 18. Mm -hmm. How did they told you that they should be mockers in the last time. Read. Right? Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. So these mockers in these last days, they're going to what? They're going to mock the word of the Most High God. They're going to mock the prophets of the Lord. Why? Because of what? Because they want to walk after their own ungodly lusts. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me the book of Galatians 6 verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Go ahead. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, be not deceived. Don't deceive yourself. Okay? For he says, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Meaning when you're going to reap what you sow. Because you deceive yourself thinking that the most high God is mocked. You understand? What is the mockery? The mockery is when the commandments go out, when the command go out, when the council goes out, you just ignore that. That's mockery. Why? Because now you make it seem like the word of God has no effect, which it does. You understand? Go back to where was that now? Jude verse, 9, verse 18 again. Jude verse 18. Go ahead. How did they told you that how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time mm -hmm. who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Because these mockers, they will walk after their own ungodly lust. And the reason the mockery comes from what? The mockery comes from where? It comes from what? It comes from the fact that they are walking after their own ungodly lust. So they will fight for their ungodly lusts, hence mocking the most You understand? And mocking the prophets of the Lord. Because their lust their ungodly lust, they worship that so much so that whatever the scriptures say, they are not going to fight to apply it. Those, that's an individual light. That's how they think. That's their mindset. That is their mind frame. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. These be they who separate themselves. You see that part right there? These be they who separate themselves. So these mockers, they separate themselves. They separate themselves from who? They separate themselves from the rest of the nation. They separate themselves from the rest of the body. Because how, when they separate themselves, it's because they are walking after their own ungodly lusts. You understand? That's why they separate themselves. Because when if you are among the brothers and sisters, you are going to what? Brothers and sisters are going to correct you. Brothers and sisters are going to guide you. Brothers and sisters are going to say, bruh, you're walking in the wrong direction. Sis, 
You need to come back. That's not the way we're going. This is the way. Walk ye in it. You understand? So, but when you separate yourself, it's because you are in love with your lust. Ungodly lust. Read that again. Verse 19. The book of Jude, verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves. Read. Central, having not the spirit. You see that thing right there? Is that they separate themselves and they are sensual, having not the spirit. Now I'm going to deal with that in just a second. Read that verse again for me. The book of Jude, verse 19. Read. These be they who separate themselves. Mm -hmm. Sensual, having not the spirit. He says they are sensual, having not the spirit. Now watch this. Let's get the definition of the word sensual. Okay. It says they are sensual, having not the spirit. Okay, read that definition now. Sensual. The definition of sensual. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Relating to or involving gratification of the senses and physical, especially sexual pleasure. Read that again. The definition of sensual. Mm -hmm. Relating to or involving gratification of the senses and physical. Especially oh, right sexual. There. It says relating to or involving gratification of the senses and physical. So your sen your 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 is is talk about your spiritual senses, your you understand, your lustful senses, and your physical senses, especially sexual pleasure. Now watch this. Read the synonyms. There's something there's a word I want in there. Keep going. Read the synonyms. Synonyms. Physical. Mm -hmm. Carnal. Carnal. You see that part right there? Carnal. So read, read, read Jude verse 19 again. Jude verse 19 again. Jude verse 19. Go ahead. These be they who separate themselves. Mm -hmm. Sensual, having not the spirit. So they separate themselves because they walk after their own ungodly lust, like we read in verse 18. Then verse 19 says, they separate themselves sensual, meaning they are carnal, having not the spirit. You understand? Watch this. Give me Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. It says, to be sensual, it means you are carnal. Okay, watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Read that. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. You see that thing? To be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is to be sensually minded, to be an individual light. When you're an individual light, you are carnally minded because you don't think about the greater good. You only think about self. Read that again, verse 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. Read. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because if you're spiritually minded, you're going to mind the things of the spirit. Read the verse above it. Read verse 5 now. Watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Read. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You see that thing? So they that, he says, they that are after the flesh, they will mind, meaning the things that will be in their mind will be fleshly things. You understand? That's what they're going to mind. That's what their mind is going to be on. Fleshly things, not spiritual things. Okay, read. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that thing? They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Give me Galatians 5, verse 17 real quick. Okay, Galatians 5. Start at verse 19. Galatians 5, verse 19. We're coming back. Galatians 5, verse 19. We're going to go back to Romans 8, verse 6. Galatians chapter, chapter 5 and verse 19. Read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Mm -hmm. Which are these? Read. Adultery, fornication, and cleanness, lasciviousness. You see that thing? So these are, the, these are the works of the flesh. So if you are carnally minded, you will mind the things of the flesh. These are the things of the flesh that, that the carnal mind will be musing upon. The carnal mind will muse upon what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness lasciviousness, that's evil sexual desires and lusts, uncleanness goes into the same thing, fornication, these are all sexual sins, okay? 
So these just examples. Okay, read on verse twenty. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. So idolatry, idolatry. These are the works of the flesh: worshiping of idols, worshiping of self. Go ahead. Witchcraft. Witchcraft meaning stubbornness. Read. Hatred. Hatred. You see that part right there? Hatred. Go ahead. Variance. Variance. Always at odds. You can't get along with the brother. Go ahead. Emulations. Emulation. Like to emulate others. Read. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. They like to cause strife. Confusion. Read. Seditions. Seditions meaning to go against the, the leadership, go against the order. Read. Heresies. Heresies meaning what? They're going to bring they're going to bring some foreign doctrines into the body. Read. Envyings. Envyings. Read. Murders. That goes into hatred as well. Read on. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Read. Revelings. That goes into partying and all that. Read. And such like. Mm -hmm. Of the which I tell you before. Read. As I have also told you in time past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see that thing right there? So these are the works of the flesh. So when he says, if you go after the things of the flesh, you will mind the things of the flesh. These are the things that are in the mind of a carnal, that of a carnally minded individual light. You understand? If you're carnally minded, these are the things that are going to be occupying your mind, your spirit. You understand? So go back to Romans chapter 8 now. Romans 8 verse 5. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We just saw the things of the flesh. So the, the individual light, they mind the things of the flesh. You understand? And the things of the flesh is the works of the flesh that we read in Galatians 5, verse 19 down. Okay, come on. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit... You see that thing? They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. What are the things of the spirit? Jump up to verse 4. Read verse 4 now. Romans chapter 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So the subject matter here is about the righteousness of the laws of God. Okay, come on. Who walk not after the flesh, mm -hmm. but after the spirit. So when you walk after the spirit, guess what? You are keeping God's commandments. You will mind the things of the Most High. You will mind lawful things. But you are walking after the flesh, you will mind unlawful things. Things that go against what is written. You see that thing? So now jump back down to verse 6 now. Romans 8 verse 6. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Read. But to be carnally minded is death. Mm-hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So meaning what? When you mind the things of the spirit, you're going to have life. You're going to have peace in your life. You understand? But when you mind carnally thing, carnal things, you mind fleshly things, you are not going to have that. You're going to have death, confusion, strife, sickness. You understand? You're going to have mental hangups. You're going to have all these things. These are demons. You understand? These are idols. Okay. But that's, that, that's the mindset of an individual light. Because an individual light, guess what? You, you'll be talking to a brother. The brother won't tell you what they're dealing with. Everything is all good. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to tell you what they're dealing with, but they act as though everything is all good. No, it's not good. Okay? It's not good. And I'm, as, we, as I go through the class, you're going to see that. If the shoe fits, you put it on, and guess what? You sit down and examine you understand? But these classes keep coming over and over, but it's just one ear at the other. Hopefully, somebody will be edified and they will get themselves together. All praise to the Most High for that. Okay? Now, read that again. Verse 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Next verse. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. 
You see that thing? The carnal mind is an enemy of God. Read. For it is not subject to the law of God. Stop right there. Neither is indeed. Not what? Hold on. For it is subject. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is not subject to the law of God. Because if you are subject to the law of God, what does that mean? You submit to the laws of the Most High. Hold this. Give me that in Proverbs 14. The last verse. Proverbs chapter 14. Okay, Proverbs 14, verse 33. Watch this. Start at verse 32. We're going to read down. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Mm -hmm. No, 15. The wicked... Proverbs 15, 15. Yeah, I'm sorry, 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. He that refuses instruction despiseth his own soul. You see that thing? It says, he that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. You know what this means? It says, if you hate instruction, he says, you hate yourself. That's heavy. If you, receive, you, you refuse instruction, he says, you hate your own soul. You hate yourself. Keep going. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. But he that heareth reproof will get understanding. Because guess what? When you hear reproof, because yes, you are listening, but are you hearing? Is it sinking in your spirit? If it's sinking in your spirit, it says what? You're going to get understand. You're going to understand what you need to do and how you need to do it and what will be the results that will come out from, the, from you applying yourself. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. You know what? Before you get that, Proverbs 14, verse 32 now. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Go ahead. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Stop right there. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. So though the, the individual light, they are, all, they are driven away because of their own wickedness. Meaning what? They don't want to stand the heat. They don't want to sit. They don't want to stand the heat and face the music. Instead, what they will do, they will, they will run. Give me Proverbs 28 and 1. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Go ahead. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Read. But the righteous are bold as a lion. You see that thing? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. You know why it says the righteous are bold? Because the righteous, they understand that if I don't apply myself, what would be the point? There's nothing else that is left. I have to apply what is written so I can get myself right. That's the mindset of a righteous man. That's the mindset of a righteous woman. But the mindset of a wicked woman, the mindset of a wicked man, they guess what? They're not going to stand bold as a lion. They're going to run away. They're going to run away from their problems. That's the mindset of an individual light. You understand? Everything is all good. Okay? Shalom, say, how are you? Ah, everything is all good. Everything is all good. You don't deal with nothing? No, everything is all good. Hmm. Okay, go back to where he was at. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Again. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Read. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Mm -hmm. But the righteous has hope in his death. Now that's heavy right there. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Meaning what? The wickedness that is, the wickedness that exists in an individual light is the same wickedness that's going to drive him out of this truth. That's the point. Because they're not going to stand, they're not going to stand and face the music. We have to, you all have to, we all have to face them. You understand that? You mess up, guess what? You have to sit down, examine yourself and face the music and apply. You understand? And work on yourself. Watch this. It says, but the righteous have hope in his death. You see that thing? Because the righteous knows if I apply, guess what? Even when I die, I know I'll, the Lord will bring me back. You understand? I'll get the kingdom. The dead in Christ shall rise first. You understand? Now go back to Proverbs 15, last verse. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And before honor is humility. Now that's heavy right there. It says the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Before you can get honor, you must humble yourself. Humble yourself to what? 
to the laws of God. You must, sub, you must be subject to God's commandments. But the individual light, if the individual light does not want to subject themselves to the law of to the laws of the Mosai, nor do they want to subject themselves to the leadership that the Lord has set over them. You see this thing? They they don't they don't want that. They are always be hiding, everything is all good because when you keep the because that guess what? You are hiding. You are hiding. You see, everything is all good. You are just hiding. I can see you are hiding, but guess what? We see how long you can keep it up. You understand? Read again, verse 33. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. Read. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And before honor is humility. And before honor is humility. Before you can receive honor, you must submit yourself to the laws of the Most High. You must be subject to God's commandments. You understand? When you are spiritually minded, guess what? You're going to subject yourself to the laws of God. But when you're carnally minded, you are going to separate yourself. You understand? Go back to Romans now. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. You see that thing? Neither indeed can be, meaning it cannot be subject to the law of God. You understand? Because it's, it's, it's against God. The mindset of an individual light is against God, is against the most high. The way he thinks, the way she thinks, the, way, the, the things she does, the things he does, everything about themselves is against this Bible. You understand? Everything, like, that's why he says they will be taken away by their own wickedness. They're not going to stand and fight. You understand? They're not going to stand up for righteousness. They're going to stand up for wickedness because it's easy to stand up for wickedness. There's no fighting you have to do. When you stand up for righteousness, now that's when the fight begins. The question is, are you, are you, going, to, are you going to fight to stand up for this Bible, to stand up for righteousness, to defend the gospel? By your actions and your conduct. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 6. You know what? Before you get that, read the definition of sensual again. Read the definition of sensual. Watch this. The definition of sensual, mm -hmm. adjective, relating to or involving gratification of the senses and physical, especially sexual pleasure. Now read the synonyms. Synonyms. Physical. Carnal. Bodily. Mm -hmm. Fleshly. Read. Animal. Hedonistic. Epicurean. Epicurean. Read. Cyberitic. Cyberitic. Uh -huh. This the next one is the one. The next word is the one I'm looking for. Read that. Voluptuary. Voluptuary. Now watch this. Let's click that. Okay, read the definition. The definition of voluptuary. Concerning with or concerned with or characterized by luxury and sensual pleasure. Luxury and sensual pleasure, meaning it's all about the feelings. If it, feel good, if, if it feels good, do it. You understand? So when we go back to Jude now, go back, go back to Jude verse 19. I have not forgotten about Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. Go back to Jude verse 19. Jude verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves Sensual, having not the spirit. So they separate themselves because they are sensual. Meaning what? They are carnally minded. It's all about the flesh. It's about the feeling. You understand? Then it says, having not the spirit. So let's, we are deep. Um, I just want to dig deeper into the, the, the word sensual. It says, um, voluptuary. Now watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 6. Okay, 
Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 6. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Mm -hmm. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. You see that thing right there? It says, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Meaning, it's just about the present. The future is not thought of. You understand? They don't think about the future. They don't think, they don't think about tomorrow. It says, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Meaning, if it feels good at the moment, do it. Then it says, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. When it says the creatures, meaning creation, the people upon earth, they use themselves, you know, like as in youth, meaning what? You only live once. That's the thought process. You understand? You only live once. Your law. Do you? Okay? That's the mindset of an individual light. Keep going. Verse 7. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and, and ointments. Mm -hmm. And let no flower of the spring pass by us. Now, this is a heavy parable. It's a metaphor. It says, let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointment. Meaning what? Because this goes into what we read. Mm, no, we have not gotten to that yet. Yeah, but we read about it in Galatians. These are, this, is the work, this falls under the works of the flesh. Because it's, up, it's about how it feels in the moment. You understand? That's why he says, let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointment. Meaning it's about what? It's about the bling. It's about how I feel right then and there. If I feel right then and there, I'm going to fulfill what I feel. You understand? It says, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. We're going to understand what that means in a minute. The flower of the spring. Keep going. Next verse. Verse 8. Let us crown ourselves with the rosebuds. Mm -hmm. before they be with it. You see that part right there? It says, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be with it. So the flower of the spring and the rosebuds is making reference to the same thing. It says, before they be with that. So guess what? They only, they're, they're only interested in what? That's why in verse 6 says, uh, read verse 6 again so we can get it. With of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Mm -hmm. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. He says, let us speedily, meaning what? They have, this is the, the spirit of covetousness is what's working here. You understand? That's why it says, let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. So they are interested in youth. The youth is the flowers of the spring is the rosebuds before they be withered. Before when is because when they are withered, what, what are they called today? They are called pumas. They are called, um, what, what are they called? They are called pumas. They are called sugar mamas and all that. That's what they are talking about. So they are interested in dealing with the young women. You understand? The virgins, the ones, those that have not dealt with men, they be going around just destroying the community and defiling these girls. That's the mindset of an individual light. You understand? They are not about nation building. They are about self-gratification. It's about themselves. Okay? Watch this. Read verse 9 now. Because verse 9 is going to explain 6, 7, and 8. Read verse 9. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 9. Go ahead. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. You see that thing? Read that part again. Let us not, let none what? Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. You see that thing of our voluptuousness. It says, let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Voluptuousness, let's now get the full definition now. Voluptuary. Hmm. So read the definition, voluptuary. The definition of voluptuary. A person devoted to luxury and sensual pleasure. No, no, read that. It says now. Voluptuaries. Okay. Read the... Yeah, read, read a person. Read that again. The definition of voluptuary. Mm -hmm. Now, a person devoted to luxury 
and sensual pleasure. So the next, the part we want out of that is says a person devoted to sensual pleasure. They are devoted. When somebody is devoted, it means what? They've de- they've dedicated themselves to sensual pleasure, meaning it's all about f- how I feel. You understand? It's, it's all everything must be just be pleasurable. You understand? Pleasurable to your body, to your mind, and all of that, and all of which is against what is written. The Bible doesn't say don't have pleasure. The pleasure must be according to what is written. You understand? It says a person devoted to sensual pleasure. They give their life to that thing because that's why they separate themselves so they can properly go after their own ungodly lusts. Because you can be among us, but spiritually you are not with us. Spiritually you are not, you are not, you are not with us. You are not for us. You understand? But physically you can be here, but spiritually you are not here with us. You understand? So go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 9 again. So this goes into sexual pleasure. You understand? Not just sexual pleasure, but any, any type of pleasure that goes against the laws of God. Whether it be stealing, whether it be lying, whether it be hatred, whether it be envy. You understand? Whether it be strife, whether it be, be a simp. You see that thing? All of that goes, go, fall, they fall under what? They fall under pleasure. Because those things are pleasurable to you. Hence why you keep doing them. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 9. Read that again. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 9. Read. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyful of our joyfulness in every place. Mm-hmm. For this is our portion and our and our lot in this. And our lot is this. Read it correctly. It says, for this is our portion and our lot is this. So you see, let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. That's why in every place they be going around just whoring all over. You understand? Another, uh, guess what? You might not necessarily be going around whoring yourself all over. Guess what? Those of you that are addicted to porn, those of you that porn is your weakness, you understand? Big booty women is your weakness, you understand? Thick black women and all that, guess what? That's exact, that's the same mindset, that's the same thing because on the internet, you'll be trolling and looking for all type of women. Sisters too, that dealing with lust, you'll be trolling the internet, you understand? Or the men that you see on the streets, wherever you travel, you go to, whether it be at the mall, whether it be at wherever, You'll be seeing men that you lust after and all of that. Guess what? It's the same thing. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. That's why now you see men with multiple babies all over the place. That's the mindset. That's the mindset of an individual light. An individual light is not about building the nation. They're about self-gratification, instant pleasure. Because when you masturbate, what is that called? Instant pleasure. You choke the chicken, instant pleasure. That's that's instant gratification. You understand? You'll be looking at sister, you lo- you'll be looking at men, you lust after them. You understand? Guess what? Instant gratification. Give me Proverbs 24, verse 9. Watch this. Proverbs 24, verse 9. Go ahead. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. So the thought of foolishness is sin. You think about it, your thought process, your, the thought of foolishness. Foolishness goes into sin. So the thought of sin, the thought of that foolishness, which is what? The foolishness that you have in your mind, because you are carnally minded, you think about sinful things. Those sinful things is what your mind is musing upon. The law says that's a sin. Because when you look at multiple women on the internet, that's lust, that's adultery. You understand? Brothers on the street, you'll be looking at them, talking to the sisters now, you'll be looking at them, lusting after them and all of that, that's a sin. You see that? That's what this is going into. Just by mere, the mere thought of thinking about it, that's sinful. 
I'm just using that as an, because that's the, one of the major things in Israel. Sex, spirit, uh, is, um, sex, sexual sins, fornication. That's one of the major ones in Israel. You understand? And brother, brothers be in denial about that. Okay? Brothers don't be dealing with nothing. Everything is all good. Yes, elder, everything is all good. I'm just be watching you as a <laughs> how, how long are you going to keep this up? <laughs> I'm going to show you some video to show you really. You're going to see yourself in the videos I'm going to show. Okay? If you don't see yourself in it, guess what? You are not rolling in the right spirit because you are in denial. You understand? You are in denial. Watch this. Give me... Um, let's go back to the let's go back to the to the to the definition of an individual light. Let's go back there. Okay. Read the definition again. Individual light. Read that. My battery is gonna die. Give me one second. Individual light. Keep reading. Read that. The definition of individual light. Mm -hmm. An individual person, one who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to and has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. I'm sorry, read that definition again. The, the, yes, read the definition again. The definition of individualite. Mm -hmm. An individual person, one who talks, dresses and acts as they wish to, and has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. So now, watch this. Give me one second. Um, read the definition now, again. The definition of individualite. Mm -hmm. An individual person, one who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to, and has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. So now they don't care about what the majority is doing. You understand? He says an individual person who dealt with that, who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. Now let's get the definition of the word wish. Because you might be thinking the definition of wish, yes. Let's get the definition of the word wish. <laughs> Yo, yo, the background noise. Ooh. Are those black Asian demons back again? Read that. Wish. Get the definition. Read that. Read that definition of wish. The definition of wish. Mm -hmm. Verb. Feel or express a strong desire or hope for something that cannot or probably will not happen. So now what I want to show you is you see the keyword. Read that definition again. The, defini the definition of wish, mm -hmm. verb, feel or express a strong desire Stop right or here. hope. It says feel or express a strong desire. The keyword he wants out of that definition is feel. So wish goes into feel, meaning feeling. It's all about how I feel. It's got nothing to do with fact. It's got nothing to do with law, which gives you sense about the reality of the situation you are in. In individual, I don't think like that. They only, the only, the only, the only decisions they make is based on how they feel. You understand? If it feels good, if it feels good at that point, I'm just gonna do it. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. But because it feels good at that moment, I'm just going to do it. To hell with everyone else. To hell with what is written in the Bible. Okay. Watch this. Now read the individual light again. The definition of individual light. Mm -hmm. An individual person, one who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. And act as they wish to, meaning based on how they feel. They talk, they, because this is how they feel, they're going to speak. It doesn't matter what they say. Because this is how I feel, I'm going to speak the way I want. I'm going to dress how I feel because today I feel like it, so I'm going to do it. You understand? I'm going to act this way because that's how I feel. And the world, they promote that. You understand? They say, no, follow your heart. Follow your dreams. That's what they teach. The world teaches that. 
follow your heart, follow your dream, not knowing, and they know that the heart is deceitful. Guess what? But they push that. So now it says, and has, and stands up for their own opinion. So it's all about feeling. It doesn't matter what they, comes out of their mouth. It doesn't matter how they dress. It doesn't matter how they act. You understand? Today, in feminist men, the alphabet community, the black woman, and the children that are raised by these black, by these black women, they are allowed to talk dress and act as they feel. You understand? And they are going to stand up for their own opinion. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians 5 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you and becometh as becometh saints. So it says these things, the fornication and cleanness or covetousness, it says it must not be named once among us as becometh saints. As we are, as becometh saints, because how as we become saints, we are saints, we are the Israelites, but as you become an, as you walk or move into that role of you being an Israelite, you understand. There's change that goes with it. You have to repent. You must keep God's commandments. You must let go of the old man and the old woman. You can walk in the newness of life. Keep God's commandments. You understand? So that's why it says, as become a saint. Go ahead. Neither filthiness. Read. No foolish talking. No what? No foolish talking. No foolish talking. Because remember what we read is uh, the mindset of an individual life. It doesn't matter what they say or how they say it. It says, it says, it says what? One who talks as they wish, meaning as they feel. So the foolish talking, they are not going to be opposed to that. You understand? They are going to welcome it because let them express. No, let him express his feelings. Let her express how she feels. You understand? That's the mindset. It doesn't matter how it looks or what it sounds like. No, no. Let them do what they do. Let them express themselves. That's why today the alphabet community got so much boldness because they are being emboldened by the media and they are being backed up by the government to push this garbage out. You understand? Read. Come on. Verse 4. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5 is 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. But we must give thanks because the Lord brought us into this truth. We must give the real give the most high praise for that thing. We must give the Lord praise. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. What well, you know what it says, who talks as they wish. It doesn't matter what they say or how they say it, but they must just say it anyway because they are expressing themselves. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You see that thing? Don't be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Because the evil communication comes from when you speak based on how you feel. You understand? If it feels good, you can say it. No, it feels right. So I'm going to say it. It feels right. No, I can't hold myself. I can't hold it. I have to let them know how I feel. For well, they want to know me. Listen, that's what the world teaches. That's the mindset of an individual life. They don't think about how it looks, how, how it makes the nation look. They don't care about that. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Isaiah chapter 20 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 4. I'm going to use an example of this because that's what we are seeing today. Read that. Isaiah 20 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 20 verse 4. Mm -hmm. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, 
even with the apartheid uncovered mm -hmm. to the shame to the shame of egypt okay what's going on with your reading today mm, something going on here read verse 4 again isaiah chapter 20 verse 4 so shall the king of assyria lead away the egyptians prisoners and the ethiopians captives young and old naked and barefoot even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of egypt you see that part right there it says even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of egypt because this today is acceptable now where black men they walk around with their pants sagging where we see their underwear some don't even wear underwear now it's the, it's, it's the, it's the fashionable now to walk around with your pants with your with your butt crack showing with your underwear showing when your pants are at your knee or your ankle. You understand? Now, coming back to, coming into Islam now. Now we are in Islam. We understand this is the thing, these are things that our brothers are doing in the world. Now, we come into Islam, right? Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. I want to show you something. Because this is something that I see all the time. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. But brothers don't take heed to it because what? You still have an individual like man. Watch this. Read that. First Corinthians 14, verse 40. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Read. Let all things be done decently and in order. He says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Right? You would think this is a scripture that brothers and sisters understand. But what I've come to realize is that brothers, especially the brothers, they don't get this. They don't understand it. That's why when you go to camp, I say, brothers, make sure you, you polish or brush your boots. Make sure your boots are shiny, they look good. You comb your hair, iron your clothes. Don't come to camp with ragged clothes and all that. You understand? Make sure that everything looks proper. Guess what? How you tie your boots is very important because it must all look the same. Everybody must tie the boots the same way. It must all look the same way. Because guess what? Some of you, I have to tell you all the time, because guess what? You don't believe this. You don't think, you don't see the importance of doing that because, oh, but that's not, not something so small. The elder is, is, listen, that's very important because you are building the nation. Everybody must be in order. We must move as one, must think as one. When you look at in the militaries of these other nations, when they, they guess what? Military boot camps, they even teach them how to fold the clothes. They teach them how to fold the clothes, how to iron, how you must put them in the wardrobe, in the cupboard, and all of that. The way they dress, they dress, they dress exactly the same way. That's why when they arrive at the military boot camp, you know what they do? They shave them. We don't do that because it's against the law. But I'm making a point that they shave, they shave them. They shave their hair off and all of that. They all be looking the same way. Nobody's going to be having long hair and all of that when everybody's looking. They don't allow that. Because what? They are teaching them structure, they are teaching them discipline, and they are teaching them order and unity, how to be as one. But for some ungodly reason in Israel, brothers don't get that. But you yet you say you are an Israelite. No, you're not an Israelite. You are an individual man. Why should every time one we have to go to when we arrive at camp, I'll be telling you uh, tie your boots? Why must I tell you that? You should know this already. But the minute you leave the house, you're supposed to have the mindset of a soldier. So a soldier's mindset is about war, the mission, the nation. That's the mindset of a soldier in Israel. You think about your nation, and you represent your nation. The way you dress, you go to war, you represent your nation. When you are not at war, we're not going to camp, guess what? Stop walking around with your shoes untied. You are untied, but you say you're an Israelite. No, you're not an Israelite. Okay? You know me, I'll tell you, bro, you don't fix your shoes. Why are you looking like that? The hell is this? That's important because guess what? If being an Israelite is not a Sabbath thing. It's not a when we all only when we go to camp. No. Every day that's how you must be. Make sure your iron, your clothes are iron. Don't be looking like don't don't looking, don't be looking homeless. You understand? Sisters too. Make sure you're, you're neat. Look neat. Look presentable because you represent your nation. The, the Lord of God must be seen through you. That change we must see. Okay, give me that in Matthew 5. 
These are some of the things that I've been telling brothers that I'm seeing. You keep repeating yourself over and over. Okay? I don't want to see that. This is the last conversation I'm having about this. In public now. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 5. When he says, let your light go shine. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Read. Let your light so shine before men. Mm -hmm. That they may see your good works. Read. And glorify your father which is in heaven. You see that part right there? Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. How are they going to see your good works if you don't apply so that they can see your good works? How are you going to win them over if you don't take the, the book immediately? Because in order for them to convert the people around you, you have, they, they, you have to take this book seriously. You don't follow them, they must follow you. You understand? You don't follow them, they must follow you. That's, why, that's how you let your light shine. That they may see your good way. That's how you glorify your father into the head. You understand? Watch this. Give me. I just wanted to touch on that. Okay. Now, watch this. Go back to the definition now. Read the definition again. The definition of individualite. Mm -hmm. An individual person. One who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. Read. And has and stands up for their own opinions with no regard to what the majority is doing. You see that thing? Now, the part, of what the part, the part I want to deal with now is that he says they stand up for their own opinions. Remember, their own opinions are based on how they feel. It's based on feeling. An opinion is not a fact. It's a feeling. An opinion is a feeling. Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 3, 24. Chapter 3, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 24. Read. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Mm. And an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. You see that part right there? Meaning their judgment is overthrown. How? Because their mind is deceived. And they deceive themselves. You understand? That verse says, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Lies. The things that they imagine in their mind based on how they feel. I give the things that they, they, how they speak, what they speak, how they dress, you understand? How they act is based on how they feel. So, they, and they're going to stand up for their feelings. When somebody corrects them, they're going to say, no, but that's your, that's, that's your opinion. You tell them, listen, you are dressed in modesty. No, that's your opinion. I, I, I'm comfortable in this. That's an individual life. You understand? In Israel, within and without, guess what? We still have those. We have individual life. You understand? We have individual life. Read it again, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 24. Read. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, mm -hmm. and an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. You see that part when it says an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment? The evil suspicion is what? The evil suspicion is when they are corrected, or you understand, or what they are, listen, when they are given counsel. The evil suspicion is the counsel that's going out is, is a personal attack on them. That's the evil suspicion. Because when the, right now the class is coming out, somebody right now, if you're thinking, or she be thinking, now this is a personal attack. How does he know? Why is he saying, well, listen, that's, that's, the, that's the evil suspicion that you have. And that evil suspicion is the reason why your judgment is overthrown. You understand? Because you, you rely on your feelings to make decisions. You, you use your feelings to make decisions. You don't use facts to make decisions. And the Bible is fact. It's not fiction. It's not opinion. No. Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, 2, verse 1. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. You see that thing? Our life. So, so now this is the mindset of an individual life. They are reasoning within themselves. They are reasoning with themselves, among themselves. You understand? This is the mindset 
King Solomon is going to give you the mindset of an individual life. Okay? And when they come together, these are the things that they, they think. Read that again, verse 1. With the Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. Mm -hmm. And death, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the, from the grave. So now, you see, this is the ungodly reasoning within themselves. They reason among themselves, they convince one another, they deceive each other, they don't correct one another. You understand? The ungodly will not correct each other because I've seen instances where brothers, they see evil going on, but they don't correct one another, they just let it go. You see that thing? So it says, for the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not a right. Because in order for you to reason right, you must have the law, which gives you sense. According to Nehemiah 8 and 8. Our life is short and tedious. Because for you to think that, that means you are what? Give me that in Surah 33. For you to say our life is short and tedious, Surah 33 and 27. This is the reason why they say this. Ecclesiastes 33 verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, mm -hmm. that he be not idle. Read. For idleness teaches much evil. You see that part right there? For idleness teaches much evil. Because when there's too much idleness, these are the things that a, a, an individual life is always thinking about. Our life is short and tedious. Like, yeah, what's the point? You know, that's the mindset. Yeah, yeah, Father, but we all gonna die. That's the mindset of an individual life. You understand? Yeah, but nobody's perfect. So in other words, don't try to be perfect as the scriptures command. No, because nobody's perfect. There's no need to try. That's the mindset of an individual life. An individual life, when things go wrong, you know what they do? They feel sorry for themselves. They don't stand up and fix it. That's an individual life. An individual life, when they make when they make mistakes, you understand? They make poor judgment. They want to wallow in that judgment instead of learning from it and not repeating the same mistake. That's the mindset of an individual life. They keep repeating the same thing over and over. And expecting different results. No. That's the mindset of an individual life. An individual life believes that when I seek counsel, I'm just going to talk about general things. I'm not going to be specific about nothing. Because why? Because I'm clever and I know too much. And guess what? They're not going to see what I'm dealing with because, you know what? I'm, I'm too embarrassed to, 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 to talk about it. Listen, you're going to die in your sin. You are doing yourself a disservice. Because whatever you're going through, guess what? It's not uncommon to learn. You might discover that the thing that you're going through, somebody else is going through the same thing. But because you are by yourself, you don't want to talk about what you're going through, guess what? You're going to die alone. The brother that speaks, they're going to know how to deal with it because somebody else is dealing with that and say, listen, this is how you must do it. You must do this. And they do it, guess what? They get delivered from that thing. You, because you are too clever, you die in your sin, guess what? That thing will destroy you or it's going to put you out of the truth. And you're going to be blaming the people that you used to go to war with. Watch this. Um, Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1. Read. For the ungodly said, Reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. You see that thing? So this is what they say. Because guess what? They have no sense. Because you can only get sense from the scriptures. If they the sense of the scriptures, they would know that, and they wouldn't they wouldn't be saying they wouldn't have such foolish talk. Now watch this. Jump down to the 21. Remember, this is the mindset of an individual life. Okay? Read the 21 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 21. Read. Such things they did imagine. They did what? And with such things they did imagine. You see that thing? Because this, this whole thing is all based on the mind. They are wicked mindset. They are imagining evil things. Remember it says, 
Uh, many are, de are deceived by their own vain opinion. These are the things that they cook up in their own wicked mind. You understand? So they imagine these things, right? And were deceived. They were deceived by their own imagination. That's what we read in Proverbs 14, verse 32. Right? For their own wickedness has blinded them. You see that thing? That's the, that's the key right there. Their own wickedness that is going to take them out this truth. It was, it was it, 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 what has blinded them. So you are blinded by your own wickedness. And these are the things that you imagine. You understand? Go back to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Let's read it again. We coming back here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. Read. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Mm -hmm. But the righteous hath hope in his death. You see that thing? The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. That is what we are reading here. Go back to Pro go, go back to Solomon 2 now. Verse 21. Wisdom 21, 21. Wisdom Solomon, chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. You see that thing? For their, because their own wickedness has blinded them. Because that same wickedness is what is going to drive them out of this truth. Because guess what? They have an evil suspicion. You have an evil suspicion towards leadership. When, 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 we, when, when, when I say to you, brothers and sisters, you better seek counsel. In your mind, you're thinking, hmm, yeah, which means he's going to know X, or X, Y, and Z about me. Whether you say it or not, I can see it. The question is, are you going to seek help or you're going to sit there, you understand? You're going to sit there and die in your sleep. The choice is yours. You understand? Because a lot of you, what I've noticed is this. In the world, you, know, you, could, you could speak about the things that you are dealing with. And the people around you, they wouldn't help you to solve them. They will help you to find ways to get around them, not to get rid of it. In the truth, guess what? We give you tools to get rid of the evil. But that requires work, it requires application, it requires effort, which some of you don't want to do. You understand? Some of you, you don't want to do, to do those things. You, you, you don't want to go through the effort, the pain of having to deal with it. Because the world will give you a way to get around it. You understand? But it doesn't solve the issue. Because when you do something, guess what? Well, we're not going to call your name up, but I will use the example, you understand, for somebody else to benefit also because you benefited from it because now you've overcome. You can also use the next brother to overcome the things because you know, listen, bro, I've been through this. I know what this is about. This is what you need to do because this is what I did and it's working for me. So guess what? You, I'm speaking from experience at that point. But if you choose to ignore the advice you are given, guess what? That thing will remain. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Go back to the definition. Read the definition again now. The definition of individualite. Mm -hmm. An individual person. One who talks, dresses, and acts as they wish to. And has and stands up for their own opinion mm -hmm. with no regard to, the, to what the majority is doing. Meaning what? They don't care how their actions or how the things they say affect the nation. It doesn't matter how it affects the nation. It only matters because it makes them feel good at that moment. Now watch this. Give me 2 Peter 2 verse 10. I'm going to show you when it says, with no regard of what the majority is doing. Watch this. 2 Peter 3. Second Peter chapter 2, I'm sorry. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Second Peter 2. Read that. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Read. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. You see that thing? This is an, this is an individual life. That's the same thing that the Apostle Jude said. Is that they walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. They walk after their own ungodly lust. 
they are sensual, having not the spirit. They don't have the spirit of the Lord because their mind is not, they, they don't mind spiritual things. They mind carnal things. Okay, read that again. Verse 10. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. And do what? And despise government. That's the point, that, that's the point right there. They despise government. Because the government has a governor to what? To set things in order. This is the this is nation building. So the individual life, they despise nation building. They despise the things that we need to do in order for us to work together and build a nation. They despise it, they hate it. That's why he says with no regard to what the majority is doing. The majority in this case is talking about what? The nation of Israel. We as a nation of Israel, we must build and work together so that we can get a body and go home. And there will be order and structure. Black people don't like that. But if you are an Israelite, you're going to like that. Well, I'm talking to Israelites now, not black people. Okay, because black people hate order and structure. The Israelite men and women, they understand order and structure. And they understand the reason why it's supposed to be there, to order the nation. An individual like they despise government. So that means they despise organization. They despise structure and chain of command. They hate that. You cannot build a nation without that. Okay? Give me Isaiah 9 and 6. This is the government they are despising. Okay? Watch this. Give me Matthew 2 verse 6. This is the governor they are despising and his government that is sitting up on earth. Watch this. Matthew 2 verse 6. We watch God. Matthew chapter 2 verse 6. Go ahead. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. Mm -hmm. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So that governor is Jesus Christ. He is the governor. And he, 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 he is the governor, you understand? And guess what? The government that he's going to govern over is the 12th tribes of the nation of Israel. That's the government. You understand? And that government is ordered based on, is ordered according to what is written in this book. It's organized based on what is written in the Bible. You understand? Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Now we know who the governor is. That's Christ. Christ is the governor. You understand? Isaiah 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For unto us a child is born. Really? Unto us a son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. You see that part right there? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. This government is the 12 tribes of Israel that is going to govern over. And we are, we, we are subject unto him. We are his subject. He is the king. We are his subject. We are subject unto him. And the government that is ordering here on earth. So when you despise the government, you despise the governor that's setting up the government on the earth. The mindset of the individual life, they despise the governor, which is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. They despise the man that is ordering this government. You understand? Let's go back. Second Peter 2, verse 10. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. They despise government. You understand? Because right now, what, we're, what, what the Lord is doing right now, he is ordering a government right now on this side of the earth. Go ahead. Presumptuous are they. You see that thing? When it says presumptuous, they are opinionated. Like we, read in, uh, like we read in the definition, they, were, they will stand for their own opinions with no regard of what the majority do, with no regard of the nation. They have, they have opinions. They've got too much to say. Okay? Read. Self-willed. They are, it says, are they? It says, presumptuous are they? Read that part again. Read it, right? Presumptuous are they? Mm -hmm. Self-willed. You see that thing is a presumptions are they self will because when somebody self will you can't tell them nothing. You 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 can't. It doesn't matter how many times you go out. Brothers still don't be comfortable. 
you are presumptuous because you are self-willed. You don't think about the nation. Do you mean to tell me you are going to, you want to be a judge in Israel, but you don't want to seek counsel? How are you going to give others counsel? How are you going to give benefit to others if you don't seek counsel to give yourself that? How are you going to do it? You see, that's what I'm saying. Is this. A lot of you, you don't really know what this is about. You don't care. You don't even care to find out what this is about. Because you are too involved in your own feelings and your own self, your own sins. You don't want to seek counsel to see how to remedy the situation, how to get yourself out of that condition. You don't want to do that. But you want to be a judge. How are you going to judge those methods? I am praying for those seven, those seven brothers that the Lord will raise up, that we're going to build those six brothers. I'm looking for those in the spirit of Christ. You understand? Those brothers that are going to be brutally honest with themselves so that they will be able to see the truth, they, they will be able to see the solution on how to bring the, the how to heal the nation. That's all I'm interested in. That's what, that, those are the type of men I'm looking for. You understand? Read on. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. You see what that means? They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They are not afraid to speak evil of the leadership that they've been set over them. You might not, you might, you might not uh, talk to a brother or sister about leadership, but by yourself, among you, with yourself, you, you hate what, what goes out from leadership. You don't like that. Some of you don't like the fact that you are being forced to study. Some of you don't like the fact that I have to check on you to see which chapter you are on. Some of you don't like that. But you say you are an Israelite. You want to wake up your nation. No, you don't want to wake up your nation. You are just deceiving yourself. You understand? Because you have an evil suspicion. Some of you, you are moving at a very slow pace. And you are doing it on purpose. Because why wouldn't you move? Why would you move? Why would you move with the spirit of hate? You are just reading slow. I'll be asking, which chapter are you on? No, I'm still in Deuteronomy. No, I'm still in Exodus. No, I'm still in Leviticus. And I'm be sitting there, I'm like, do you know what this is about? No, you don't get it. Because it's about you. It's not about the nation. If it was about the nation, you will move with the spirit of hate. You're not going to be, guess what? You will move with the spirit of hate. Because you will take this serious. But some of you, you don't take it serious. And some of you have been here longer. But you don't move with the spirit of hate. I see new brothers and sisters that are just coming in, they have the spirit of hate. Because guess what? Once they are done with the whole Bible, they're going to repeat, they're going to do a repeat. They're going to start over and read it again until the, the spirit of the Lord is in them. Right now, the seed is being planted. You understand? If there's no use of you saying, I'm sitting there, yeah, I'm doing my four chapters, okay? But one, you don't deal with the spirit of hate. Two, as you are reading, you are studying, the things that you are reading about, you cannot relate them with what is happening to today. Because if, that, if that's the case, you would have a lot of questions about the stuff that you are going through versus the, the, the examples that you are reading and you are, you are seeing as you are studying the history of our forefathers, the decisions they've made, and how it relates to you. You mean to tell me you will read all these four chapters every day, nothing relates to you, and you don't have questions about that thing that relates to you, it's impossible. But you want to be a judge. Keep going. Read verse 11. Read verse 11 now. Come on. Verse 11. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, mm -hmm. bring not reeling, bring not reeling accusation against them before the Lord. He said, don't bring raining accusations against them, against the angels. It's not talking about Gabriel and, and Uriel or Michael. No, it's talking about the leaders. Okay, keep going. Let's go. But these, as natural brute beasts, mm -hmm. made to be taken and destroyed. You see what the Lord is saying about an individual life? He says they are natural brute beasts. They are not spiritual. They are natural. They are calm. Made to be taken and destroyed. They put to death. Go ahead. Speak evil of the things 
that they are that they understand not they speak evil of things and shall utterly perish. Not. Wait, he says they speak evil of things that they understand not. That's what we read in the last. You understand? Because they have an evil suspicion. Because that, that evil suspicion they have has overthrown their judgment. Now they don't have sound thinking. Okay, come on. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You're gonna perish, you're gonna die in your sin. That's what it says. Go ahead. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Which is death. As they as as they that count it pleasure to write in the day in the daytime. He says they count it pleasure to write in the daytime. Meaning what? You you are, you don't even hide your sins anymore. You do them in broad daylight. Go ahead. Spots they are and blemishes, mm -hmm. sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. You see that thing, sporting themselves. Remember what we read with, with the mindset of the individual life. It says, it says, has, it says, has and stands up for their own opinion with no regard to what the majority is doing. Because it's all based on feeling and opinion. No facts and actions to support the nation. It's got nothing to do with that. Go ahead. Having eyes full of adultery. You see that thing? That's the key right there. Having eyes full of adultery. Remember what we read in Jude? It says, walking after their own ungodly lust. Having eyes full of adultery. They're, they're wanting eyes. Sexual eyes. Lustful eyes. Okay, go ahead. And that cannot cease from sin. Mm -hmm. They cannot stop from breaking the laws of God. Please. Beguiling unstable souls. Meaning deceiving unstable souls. Because the unstable soul is those that are not stable in this truth yet. Okay, go ahead. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Is that and heart, meaning in their mind, it says they've exercised with covetous practices. They are cursed children. Meaning what? They have the spirit of covetousness. Go ahead. Which have forsaken the right way. They have forsaken the right way. The laws of the most high. Read. Right? And are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozo, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You see that thing? Balaam. Because remember what we were reading the book of Numbers. Balaam, he wanted... He was, he was asked to do a job, but he wanted to get paid, you understand, for what he wanted to do. So he was a hireling. Balaam was a hireling. He says, these are hirelings. You understand? This is the character of a hireling. They only care about wages, getting paid. Okay? Watch this. It says, it says, which has forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basso, meaning the son of Beo. It says, who love the wages of unrighteousness? Meaning, say, what is the wages of right, unrighteousness? Death. Give me Romans 6, 23. Who love the wages of unrighteousness? Because sin is, sin is pleasurable. But it's only for a moment. You understand? It's only for a season. Romans 6, verse 23. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the wages of sin is death. Mm hmm but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because Christ gave us the spirit of grace for us to get ourselves together before he returns. But he says the wages of sin is death. That's the same thing that the Apostle Peter is saying. Go back to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15 again. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozo, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. The wages of unrighteousness is death. But in order for you to love, how what how is it that you can love the wages of unrighteousness? Because sin is pleasurable. You understand? It's pleasurable. That's why it's love. The wages of unrighteousness. You don't think about the wages of unrighteousness at that point. But you love unrighteousness, meaning sin. You understand? Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. 
Okay, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse 25. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. Come on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see that thing? Rather choose affliction, meaning what? Fight to keep God's commandments. Fight to overcome your lust rather than to enjoy, to give in into the pleasures of sin for a season. You understand? But when you think about the nation, guess what? You want to fight. I'm not saying you're not gonna you're not gonna struggle with those lands. I'm not saying that. Don't get twisted. But guess what? When when you, you have to battle the sin, you have to battle that last. Battle means that you are in the fight. You can only you only win it if you are in it. You're gonna win the fight if you are in the fight. But if you give up the goal, guess what? You're not gonna win it. You already lost. So you cannot give up. You have to fight. But some of you, you have something, there's, there's sin that keep coming over and coming back over and over in your in your faith, in the, in your walk. You know what some of you do? You you fall, right? You get up. And you are fighting, but in your mind, you think you are fighting. Because you think you can do it on your own. You think you don't have to seek counsel for it. Because you 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 have it you have it good maybe for a good month you, you don't relax you don't go back into that state you understand and then the the next month you fall back into that state and then it just becomes this roller coaster and you don't talk you don't talk to nobody you don't say nothing you don't seek counsel about it you keep you think you can do it on your own you lie to yourself the reason why the Lord says gather yourself together why why is he saying that because he knows that somebody else has dealt with that thing that you're dealing with, and they're gonna give you, a, they're gonna, they're gonna counsel you on what you must do to overcome. But some of you, you are an individual, like you don't trust the, the, the leadership that the Lord has set over you because you don't want to be looked in a certain way. Nobody's gonna look at you in a certain way. I'm not gonna look at you in a certain way, but I will go into the scripture to show you what you must do, and I will give you the scriptures. Based also on the experience I have. But some of you, every month, the thing just keeps, you, you, it keeps coming back over and over every month. You don't tell nobody what it is. Eventually, it's going to blow up in your face. And that's when we're going to know about it. At that point, it's too late, or it's going to be very hard for you to overcome it. And guess what? You're not going to have the strength to fight. At that point, okay. Because some of you, you are dealing with something. You are battling with something right now. It keeps coming back over and over. It's not one; it's multiple of them. But you're just sitting there thinking, "No, I fall today. Tomorrow I get up." I'm listen. It is this roller coaster. But how come is it is not getting fixed? Because you don't want to see cancer. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verse seven. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 7. Go ahead. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. Now, this is King Solomon. Now, remember, this is a book of regret. The book of Ecclesiastes is a book of regret. What not to do? Don't do what I did. It says again, I considered all transformation. It says, then I returned. And I saw vanity under the sun. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. There is one alone. There is one what? There is one alone. There is one alone. An individual life. Because this is the thing we see. Okay, go ahead. And there is not a second. There is not somebody else to help you with this. Go ahead. Yea, he is neither child nor brother. You see that part right there? You don't have a child, you don't have a brother, because guess what? An individual life, they don't think like that. They don't think that if the, the brothers and sisters in the congregation, those are your actual brothers. The sisters in the congregation, those are your actual sisters. It's not the sister in the truth. No, that's your actual sister. Not the one that you grew up with in your house. No. The one that you are, the one that you are in the truth with, 
that's your actual sister may say because they keep in the commandment. The one that is the brother that is in the in the truth with you, that's your actual brother may say because they keep in the commandment of the Most High in the spirit of Christ. They know that they are in Israel. Okay. So guess what? The children in the congregation, those you're gonna see them as your children. That's the mindset of a leader. That's the mindset of a man that is about his nation. You think like that. You understand? Read that again, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother. Mm -hmm. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. You see that thing? Because he's selfish. He says, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Because what he covetous. That's why it says, yet is there no end of all his labor. Meaning he doesn't stop laboring. But this laboring is not for the benefit of the most high. It's not for the benefit of his nation. It's to benefit himself. You understand? That's why it, it, it says, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Meaning what? He's got an evil eye. You see that? Go ahead. Neither says he, for whom do I labor? You see that thing? Neither says he, who am I laboring for? And that's the thing. Why should I seek counsel for? Because you think it's just about you. You simple as hell. It's not about you. You see that, that, you see that type of mindset? Your know, oh, man, that mindset really takes me off. Because you don't think about your nation. You don't think about you only think about yourself. No, I'm not going to seek counsel. I'm dealing with it on my own. I'm going to deal with it the best way I only think with it, the way I know how. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. And of course, that's the mindset of an individual man. You don't think about your nation. That's the subject that Solomon is talking about. You understand? Read. Read that part again. He says, neither what? Neither saith he. For whom do I labor mm -hmm. and bereave my soul of good? You see that thing? It's all it's a me, 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 me. It's just about him. Ray. This is also vanity. Mm -hmm. Yea, it is a soul travail. Meaning what? It's a worthless life. Because you're supposed to add value to your nation. But here you are. You are battling with multiple lusts. You are battling with multiple multiple um, multiple evil wicked thoughts, you don't know how to deal with them because you think you can just read a couple of scriptures, you want to figure it out. No, it's not, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You have to seek, yes, you must study, you must apply, but you must seek counsel. Because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff that I have seen in this too. And I'm still, I'm still seeing them even till, till this day. You understand? Because I'm a day. And I see, I see those things. Guess what? As some of you, you, you think you know better. You are not going to be a benefit to your nation. You are going to be a witness to your nation. You understand? Read. Two are better than one. You see that thing right there? Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. It's a two are better than one. So, but when you are by yourself, you don't talk to nobody. Because guess what? If you understood the unity of the brethren, right? When the strain is about to jump on you, when you know that this last is very hot in me, I can't contain myself. Because you don't understand the unity of brethren, you're not going to pick up the phone and call a brother and talk about the scriptures so that Satan can leave. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do it, but you're going to apply Jude verse 19. Jude verse 19 will happen to you. And aging, you're gonna go after that ungodly life. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Two are better than one. Read. Really? Because they have a good reward for their labor. You see that thing? They have a good reward for their labor. Because when we're laboring together, you do this, I do that. Together, the labor that we're doing together, guess what? We both get to benefit. If one falls, another one will help itself. Next verse. Go ahead. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. You see that part right there? If they fall, one will help his fellow. Meaning what? 
You find yourself in some situation. You are battling with this lust, with this thing. It doesn't go away. And the most I is going to make sure that it doesn't matter how many fasts you can, how many fasts you can do, how many prayers you can make. As long as you don't apply the unity of brethren to call up your, your to, to, to call up a brother in the truth, to, to, to call me up and say, sir, I'm dealing with this. What's my question? Guess what? The most I will make sure that that thing remains. Some of you don't understand what you're dealing with. You don't understand what this is about. Because no, I don't want to be embarrassed and all of that. And guess what? The same spirit you have is the same spirit you have where you don't want to talk about the stuff that you are you're, you're struggling with. Guess what? When you go before the most high, you are not honest also. You make excuses for your sins. You sugarcoat things before the Lord. You hide in your sins before the Lord. Yes, because he's the same spirit you are rolling in. And I know that someone right now say, no, me, me, I'm honest before the Lord. Guess what? This is for you. Because I know right now that somebody say, no, nah, me, I'm literally honest before the Lord. You just lie, and lie. You just lie. You just lie. Okay? Because how do you know the, 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 the proof of that is that you can't even be honest with yourself. What makes you think you're going to be honest with the Musa or honest with the brothers in the congregation? You will not. Or honest about, listen, I'm dealing with it. I'm battling with it. Somebody help me. Okay? Read that, read that thing again. Read it again, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. Read. For if they fall, mm -hmm. the one will lift up his fellow. Come on. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Mm -hmm. Or he hath not another to help him. You to help him up. He says, but woe unto him that is alone. He says, death unto you. Destruction unto you. When he falleth. For he has not another to help him up. Who going to help you now at this point? Nobody going to help you because you, you are an individual. You are in the, you are in the truth. Because that's what you think you are. You think you are in the truth, but you are not. You are not in the truth. You are an individual like who's got bring it on in a bottle of blue. That's what you've got. The Lord is telling you to read verse 10 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10. Mm -hmm. For if they fall, the one will, will lift his, up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath, for he hath not another to help him up. Now jump down to verse 12. Watch this. Verse 12. And if one prevail against him, mm -hmm. two shall withstand him. Read. And if a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Read verse 12 again. Read it right. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And, if, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So the Lord is telling us that if one prevail against him, two shall withstand. You see that thing? So meaning what? Two is better than one. Because war unto him that is alone. It's not good to be alone. Because when you are struggling by yourself, who's going to help you? There is a reason why the Lord brought you into the truth. There is a reason why the Lord brought you into this particular camp. Because in this particular camp, we keep it lit. We keep it 100. Some of you don't like that. I know a lot of you don't like that. Thing. You don't like it. Things are too real for you. You don't like that. You understand? You're in the wrong place. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, it says, two shall we send him, and a three, four cord is not quickly broken. Because together we are strong. That's what he's telling you. Unity. What is King Solomon speaking of here? Unity. We must unite. We must come together. And what unites us is the laws of God. God's commandments is what brings us together. Not politics. Not religion. Not sin. Not, none of that. No. The laws of the whole side. And guess what? The people come in, they've got issues. They are here to get healed. But a lot of the times, the medication is not going to like it because it's going to be bitter, but it's going to be good for you. You understand? Watch this. It is, what you're about to see here is when the, 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 the lioness and the lion, the males, are all together now. I'm going to show you this power in unity. You understand? There's power in unity. 
Watch what we're about to see. Watch this. This is where dragons dwell. feeds on a dead hippo washed up on the river's bank. Now, they are feeding, they are feeding on a, a dying hippo. The river pride feeds on a dead hippo washed up on the river's bank. Now, you see, the, the croc wants to eat, the, the crocodile wants to eat also. Look at what the female is doing. The female is trying to scare the lion, the, the crocodile off. Okay? And nothing is nothing is happening. Watch this. That's the lioness now. You see the, the, the lionesses now? They want to fight the crocodile off. Okay, the crocodile is not moving. Crocodiles don't fear the rulers of the land, with one exception. Woo! Stop hitting stop. Mm. Rulers of the land, with one exception. Look at that. Fang. <laughs> Look at that thing, man. Dude, uh, Look at that thing. They are all breaking down. Hmm. Dude, that is it. Look at that thing. Pride's protector has earned his keep. Mm, mm, mm. Let's give the most a hand for that thing. Okay. Give me Micah 5 and 7. Give me Micah chapter 5 and 7. Watch this. Micah 5 and 7. Read that thing. Okay. Micah chapter 5 and 7. Read. And the remnants of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a Jew from the Lord. Mm -hmm. As the showers upon the grass. We're going to be that everywhere. That series is not for me. We're going to be everywhere. We're going to be repenting. Read. That what? Come on. Say that tear is not for man. That tear is not for man. No waiteth for the sons of men. No waiteth for the sons of men. He says, we're not going to, when we wake up as the nation of Israel, we're not going to wait for nobody. This nation is not going to tell us nothing. That's what the Lord is saying right there. That tear is not for men. We are waiting for the sons of men. Next verse. Read. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people Read. as a lying among the beasts of the forest. Mm, mm, mm. Read. Come on. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. As a young lion. Meaning who young if... Power, hold on. Young powerful lion. You understand? Young lion in full pride. Read. Who if he go through mm -hmm. both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and none can deliver. That's exactly that's what you just saw right there. That's what you just saw. All the crocodiles were coming out. You understand? And the, the, the leader of the camp said, okay, let's deal with this thing right here. You see the camp? That's the spirit of Christ right there. Okay? That's the spirit of Christ. You see this thing? You see the, the, the women just be running their mouth? When the black man sets foot on the scene with this Bible, no nation can stand before. I hope you brothers can see that. You brothers get that? What is wrong with you, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have it there. Read verse 8 again. Come on. My ketchup, the 5 is 8. Read. And the remnants of Jacob shall be mm. among the Gentiles in the midst of many people 
Come on. As a lion among the beasts of the forest. Mm -hmm. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. Really? If he go through, both shut it down and tear it in pieces and none can deliver. And none can deliver. That's what you saw with the crocodile. That's, that's the enemy. That also goes into what the, your sin, your lust that you're dealing with. Next verse. Go ahead. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries. That's what you saw. Read. And all thine enemies shall be cut off. And all thine enemies shall be cut off. Jump down to verse 15 now. Read that. Verse 15. And I will execute vengeance in anger mm -hmm. and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. You see, you see that thing, such as if they have not heard. Meaning what? The level of judgment that's coming, they have never seen nothing like it. You understand? They have never seen anything like it. Books are going to be written about it when we get delivered. The second exodus. Okay. Now, let's just go back one. When the king of the jungle steps on the sea. Rulers of the land. Crocodiles don't fear the rulers of the land. With one exception. <laughs> Fang. If thou. Pride's protector has earned his keep. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some beautiful stuff right there. Look at that line. Mm. Heavy stuff. Okay. Heavy stuff. I hope you sisters can see that. You sisters still, you still think you don't need no man? Hmm? No, sir. Oh, baby, to the most high. Oh, baby. That's what I like to hear right there. Give me that instruction verse two. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 2. Go ahead. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart, mm -hmm. that thy soul be not torn in, in pieces as a bull straying alone. That's what you saw with the lion that we, with the first lion that I showed you, that was surrounded by hyenas, and the second lioness that was surrounded by hyenas. Yes. That exactly in the spirit, because you have, don't think about it in a carnal way. Think about it in a spiritual way, because this is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual fight. So those hyenas represent problems in your life. And when you approach it with an individual like mindset, you're not going to survive. You're not going to make it. You understand? Because you're going to be as that bull playing alone. And guess what? The, life, the hyenas will overcome you. Your sins will overcome you, you will drown, you live this truth. You understand? We don't want that for any of you. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Read that. First Peter chapter 5 is 8. Go ahead. Be sober. Mm -hmm. Be vigilant. You see that thing? Because your adversary, the devil. It says, be sober, get your mind right, get your mind correct, you understand? Be vigilant. You must be, you must be watchful, you understand? Be vigilant. The only way you're going to be vigilant, people have to watch over you. If you think you're going to do it, do it alone, you're not going to be vigilant. Because you must be taught how. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil. Mm -hmm. As a warring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see that part right there? Seeking whom he may devour. Because Satan does it. You be slain alone as a bull, yes, Satan is going to tear your ass up. Understand this. Excuse my French. You understand? As is in the Bible, but excuse my French. Satan will tear your behind up. Understand this. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Give me the book of Malachi, okay? Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 now. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. 
Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Mm-hmm. Then they that feared the Lord spake often what? one to Hold another. On. Wait, wait. They that did what? Then they that feared the Lord mm-hmm. spake often one to another. They that feared the Lord. If you fear the Lord, it says they speak often one to another. There's only a couple of brothers and sisters that I talk to on a daily basis. You understand? They, I know of their affairs, they know of mine. You understand? How things are going day to day. On a daily basis without faith. You understand? So guess what? Because they, they understand the importance of doing what? They understand the importance of this scripture right here. Because guess what? As we having a conversation, I'm going to pick up something is not correct. They can pick up, I'm not fine. You see, so on and so forth. Read that again, verse 16. Micah chapter 3, verse 16. Read. Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another. Some of you, you don't do that. And you don't, guess what? You are breaking this commandment right here. You understand? That's why right, when you see a man of understanding, he says you must get big times unto him. Give me that interaction. Because it's interaction. It is just because chapter 6. Okay. Sarah chapter 6 and verse, start at verse 34. Ecclesiastes verse 34. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 34. Go ahead. Stand in the multitude of, of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. You see that thing? The problem is that some of you, you don't trust leadership to guide you. You don't trust me because you still see, you still see leadership as niggas with violence. That's the only thing. You understand? Yes. Because you still don't believe this. But it's not going to change what is written. It is what it is. Two thirds are not going to get it. Okay? Keep going. Stand and be willing to hear every godly discourse. Mm-hmm. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. You see that thing? Don't let the parables of understanding that you get from the elders escape you. Go ahead. Verse 36, come on. And if thou seest a man of understanding, mm-hmm. get thee betimes times unto him, mm-hmm. and let thy foot with the steps of his door. You see that thing? A lot of you, you don't do this. A lot of you, you do not do this thing. You understand? It says, and let thy foot with the steps of his door. There's only a handful, very few, very few brothers, that always keep contact, and I talk to them on a day to day. You understand? And sisters too. But the rest, you do not do that. You know why? Because you don't see us as men of understanding. You see us as niggas with Bible, Jackies with Bible, Catholics with Bible. Yes, that's true. Believe it or not, that's exactly what it is. You understand? But it's not going to change what is this. The scriptures cannot be broken. We are waking up the day. Shame on you if you want to die in your sin. You drop dead in your own sin. Okay? All of these things that I'm showing you is to edify you, to show you that this is, this way I've been moving is not the right way because it's not in the scripture. Because you don't see anywhere in the Bible where the most high God is commanding Israel to be by themselves. No. You never see that. It says, gather yourself together. Come together. There's many, there's many individuals then those individuals must come together as one in the spirit of Christ. That's what the Lord wants. Okay? Go back to Malachi, chapter 3, verse 16. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another. Mm -hmm. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. You see what happened? It says, when a book of remembrance... Wait, wait, wait. It says, and the Lord hearkened and heard. So when we speak one to another on a daily basis, it says, the Lord hears it and he has, the Lord, it says, the Lord hearkens, he listens to it, you understand, and he hears everything that you say. And guess what happens next? It says, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord, and that thought upon his name. Meaning what? You be doing that, the Lord put that, that, that thing is recorded in the heaven. Some of you don't understand it. 
in the world, you'll be talking to your buddy every day about, hey, you got that leave? You understand? You still have that, you still have those uh, phone videos. You know, you talk to, you talk to your, your wicked, your wicked friend or your wicked brother in the world or your girlfriend on a daily basis. But when you come in Israel, when the Lord says do it, you don't do it. But you talk to your buddy every single day about wicked stuff. But when you come into the truth, you don't do it. You know, you see how backward that mindset, that mindset is backward thinking. You understand? Backward thinking. Watch this. Give me the book of Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Because unity is enemy to the meek. Okay? But it's not enemy to an Israelite man or Israelite woman that is repenting. Read what you got. Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Mm -hmm. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You see that part when it says, gather yourself together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Guess what? We are, we, are, we are not desired, right, as a nation. Now, we are, we, are, we, we are not desired as a nation. The Lord is saying we must gather together. Because when we gather together, guess what's going to happen? We are not going to be, we are going to be even more not desired. Because right now the nations, they act like they desire us. Why? Because we are divided. The minute we come together, the nation are going to hate us even more. You need to understand that. Okay? That's why it says, gather yourselves together. Because right now you are individual life. Yes, you might be among the congregation, but you are still acting like an individual life. You think you are, you are by yourself. No, you are not by yourself. You understand? But, because, but if you want to move like that, you are going to die in, by yourself in that space. The Lord is not going to have mercy on you. You understand? That's why it says, gather yourself together, yea. Gather together, all nations not desire. Right now, the nations, they love us because what? We are not together. We don't gather together. The minute we come together, you the unity of brethren, then we're gonna piss the nation off. Understand that? The nations are not the, the, the nations, the, the nations are not fearful because we join politics and great good. They don't care about that. They only care about when brothers repent, sisters repent, children come into the truth. Now we are a unit. We talk about marriage, we talk about being a man. Get your get your life together. You understand? Take care of your friends, take care of your children, love the brethren. Take care of your nation. The nations don't like that. You understand? The nations don't like that. Okay, give me that in Baruch 437 real quick. Okay, because it says we must gather together. And this is what's going to bring the nation of Israel together in the spirit of Christ. Read that. Baruch chapter 4 verse 37. Read. Oh, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. in they come gathered. Remember, it says, thy sons come, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. The Lord sent us away. Remember, the Lord sent us away. Jump up to chapter 4, same chapter, read verse 6. With thou the Lord sent us away. Okay. 4 verse 6. Read that. Baruch chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved God to wrath. Read. You were delivered unto the enemies. We were delivered to the hands of our enemies. Now we are in the hands of our enemies and in their land. You understand? Read verse 37 again now. Baruch chapter 4 verse 37. Mm -hmm. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Read. They come gathered together from the east to the west mm -hmm. by the word of the Holy One. Read. Rejoicing in the glory of God. This is a thing, rejoicing in the glory of God. The glory of the king. But it says we come gathered together by the word of the Holy One. Because God command, God's law is what's bringing the nation of Israel together. Is what's going to keep us together. Not only will it bring us together, but it will keep us together. And that's where power comes from. There's power in unity. And that power is rulership of all these nations on earth. That's the power that comes with us coming together as one. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us here. We must come together. Okay, give me that in, um, give me Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah 
Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Read. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, mm -hmm. Not by might, nor mm -hmm. by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see what he's saying? But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The spirit of the Lord is what's going to bring us together as one. That's what's going to happen. That's what the Lord is saying. Any other way is not going to happen. So that's 25 and 1. This is what this is the reason why the nations are free. Okay. So that's 25 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 1. Go ahead. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. Stop right there. You see that it, this is how we beautify the most high. When we come together, the unity of brethren. How are you going to have the unity of brethren when, while brothers, they are dealing with things on their own, they don't talk to nobody. You don't have the unity, you, you don't want to unite with your brethren. Because here you are, you are battling with this. You understand? And guess what? How are you going to know if that brother is dealing with it? You're not going to know. Because you don't talk to the brother. How are you going to know? Because you come to me and say, I'm dealing with such and such. Another brother comes to me, I'm dealing with such and such. I'm seeing some common things going on. Guess what? A class will go out so that brothers can say, you know what, these are the tools, I need to apply this. Some of you, you don't look at it like that. You just one year out the other, or you become offended. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. The unity of brethren. Read. The love of neighbors. You see this thing right there? That's why it says come together. Because if there was no unity of the brotherhood, when you look at the lion now, the lion's brotherhood, if there was no unity of the brethren, what do you think was going to happen? Was that brother going to go and help the brother out? No. Was he going to go and rescue him? No. He was just going to sit there and be put to death by those hyenas. So guess what? When you don't seek counsel, you act like everything is all good, and we keep telling, bruh, seek counsel, but you don't do it. Guess what? The classes will go out. The hope is, the prayer is, you take it to your class. But a lot of you, you don't do it. So now I'm just going to sit there and watch. What are we going to do? Because we can't force it on you. Because you don't want to take it the step. Because you don't want you don't want leadership to look at you sideways. I'm not going to look at you sideways. I've got my own demons I'm dealing with. You understand? I've got my own demons that stand up. I'm at my own stuff I'm dealing with. Guess what? You are here so that you can get help. You can get healing. But a lot of you, you want to be cuddled when those things happen. When you come for a council, guess what? There are certain situations that require extreme magic. Some they don't. Some, you know, you know, it's it, it very light situations. Bruh, just do X, Y, Z. This thing will go away. Some situations, they require extreme magic. You understand? But some brothers, you are so sensitive that when cancer goes out, you just take it personal. You don't want to see cancer no more. You simple as that. Okay. That thing is not going to go away. Okay. Read on. The love of neighbors. Mm -hmm. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that thing? The love of neighbors. A man and a wife that agree together. So this is what scares the nation right here. And this is what beautifies the whole side. The unity of brethren, okay? The love of neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. A man and a wife that agree together because when men and women agree together, guess what happens? We get to build strong families. The children, we get, we get to build strong children and guess what? Ultimately, that means we're building a strong nation that is rooted and grounded by the laws of the most high God. That's how we beautify the most high. Anything outside of that will not beautify the Lord. Psalms 133 verse 1. Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Look, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. 
You see that thing? That's that that word right there. What's that word? That last word, read that. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In what? In unity. In unity. What's that word? In unity. Unity. That, that, that word right there, this, that, that's what the Lord wants. This right here is kryptonite to black people. It's kryptonite to so-called black people. Because we don't want to unite. We only come together for what? Watch this. This is when black people come together. Give me that in Hosea 7 verse 14. I'll show you when, when black men and black women come together today. This is what brings them together. Okay? That's not, this, that, this, that, this is not how the most High God wants us to come together. Hosea 7 verse 14. Watch this. Hosea chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. Mm -hmm. When they howled upon their beds. Really? They assemble themselves for corn and wine, and they rebel against me. That's the only time when black men, black women come together. When they come together for corn and wine, meaning what? Birthday parties, bashes, street whatever, these street bashes and all of that, parties. Whenever there's parties and reveling and dancing and going to clubs and all of that, nightclubs and all, that's when black people come together. And when they come together, they come together for food and alcohol. And when they do that, guess what? The Lord says, and they rebel against me. What is the rebellion? Because men and women come together, they're drinking, they're crying and all of that. Guess what? Black women, they get drunk. Men get drunk. They get horny. One night stand. That's, that's how they rebel against the Lord. That's what it says. You see this thing? Go back to Psalms 133 verse 1. Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Read. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Really? It is like the precious ointment upon the head mm -hmm. that ran down upon the beard. Really? Even Aaron's beard that went down like that went down to the skirts of his garments. So now what you are seeing here, they are comparing the unity of the brethren to the precious oil that what? That only the, 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 the priest, the high priest used to use. And it could not be, it could not be duplicated. You understand? So the, the unity of, of the brethren are coming together. It cannot be, it's not like any other thing on this earth. It's unique unto itself. You understand? Because we are special unto the most high. We're a special people. Each and every one of you, you are special to the most high. You have to believe that. You understand? Believe it enough to what? To seek counsel to get your mind right. Don't live in la la land. Don't be in a fairy world. Okay? Watch this. Give me Acts 2 verse 1. Acts. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Really? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. You see that part right there? They were all in one accord in one place. Meaning what? They were all in one agreement. Same mind, same spirit, same judgment. Unity, to sum it up. They were all united as one. Paul tried. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Read that. Ephesians 4 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. You see that part right there? Endeavoring. The word endeavor means fight. Fight to keep the unity. That's the same. That's what we're reading in Malachi 3. You understand? Because they that fear the Lord, they say often one to another. You must endeavor to keep the unity. Of the spirit in the bond of peace, the bond of the brotherhood. You understand? That's what the Lord is looking for. That's what the Most High God wants. You will never find anywhere in the scripture when the Most High God is commanding brothers and sisters to be by themselves, to be individual. Men. Where is that scripture at? You're not going to find that in the Bible. The Most High God is about the unity and the coming together of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel together as one, in order, in structure, having a chain of command. 
to what? To be able to build the nation and guard the nation and protect it. You understand? That's what the most high God wants. Ephesians 2 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Mm -hmm. That at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You see that part right there? It says you were without Christ, being aliens. Yes, we were without Christ before. Because we didn't know the law until we were woken up by the Most High. Now we know Christ. We are now we, we are not without Christ no more. We are with Christ. Because before we were without him, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We didn't even know we are the Israelites. You understand? Read. And strangers from the covenant of promise. Stop right there. And strangers from the covenant of promise. What is the, the, the promise, the promise that was made to our forefather Abraham that you will not forsake us, you will not forsake our seed, we will get the we will go, we will get the kingdom based on the what? The promise that the Lord made to our forefather Abraham. So guess what? Now we are no longer strangers to that promise. We remember we did think ourselves now. Okay, go ahead. Having no hope mm -hmm. and without God in the world. And that's what that's the, that's where we were. And that's what the majority of our people are at the moment. They are without God. They are they have no hope. They are without God in the world because the world teaches them white Jesus. The world teaches them Buddha. The world teaches them Egyptian garbage. The world teaches them politics and religion. Not the laws of the most high, not to remember who they are according to the scriptures that they are the Israelites. The world won't teach that, right? But now in Christ, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off mm -hmm. are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You see that thing? When Christ died, he brought all four together as one. Okay, read on. For he is our peace. You see that thing right there? For he is our peace. Christ is the, is, is Christ is the bond that brought peace in Israel. You understand? To bring all 12, 12 tribes together as one. You understand? In the bond of peace. He brought that bond of the brotherhood of peace in Israel among the 12 tribes. Read. Who hath made both one. Mm -hmm. Both. Both one. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Both one. Go ahead. Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You see that thing? He broke down the middle wall of partition between us because after Solomon died, the kingdom split. There was war between Israel, northern kingdom, and southern kingdom. Christ is the one that brought that peace and brought the and brought the bond of the brotherhood together. Go ahead. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, one new man. Mm -hmm. So making peace. So that twain, meaning two, one new man, that one new man is all twelve as one. The twain is southern kingdom, northern kingdom. When it says having abolished in his flesh the enmity, meaning what? He died on the cross to bring peace between the twelve tribes of Israel. You understand? Go ahead. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, mm. having slain the enmity thereby. Now this verse is heavy. It says, and that he might reconcile because guess what? We were together before. The kingdom got split. We were scattered. Now Christ is to reconcile us, bring us back together as one, as we once were. This is both unto God in one body. That body is one nation. Another word for body is nation. You understand? God is uh, both unto God in one body, in nation, by the cross, where he died, having slain the enmity thereby, meaning the hatred between northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Okay, give me Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Mm -hmm. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will he will, will ye season it? Read. 
have salt in yourselves mm -hmm. and have peace one with another. You see what he's saying? He says, have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. That salt, remember the salt is a seasoning agent. What is the seasoning agent that seasons us, the nation of Israel? The laws of the Most High God. That's why it says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of all. That that spirit is the salt. Is that flavoring agent to bring flavor? Because the word of the Most High God give us flavor. And we give the word flavor with the word of the Most High. Understand that? Give me that in Matthew, okay? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse... Hmm, ye are the salt of the earth. You can't see properly. This Bible. That's 13, you know sir. Um, yes, verse 13. Thank you. Read verse 13. Matthew chapter 5 is 13. Go ahead. Ye are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? You see that thing? He says, ye are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the whole earth. Israelite men and women. Okay? He says, but if the salt has lost its savor, meaning what? Its taste, its flavor. Okay? Where will shall it be salted? Why are you gonna, where, what are you going to insult it with? Okay, go ahead. It is therefore good for nothing. You see that thing? It is therefore good for nothing. Which means when our people come together out there and they don't use the word of God, their unity is good for nothing. That's why they don't go nowhere. But when you come together in the Most High God's law, you come together with the laws of the Most High, guess what? You're going to prosper. You understand? You keep the commandments, that's how the Most High God is going to make sure that we, what, we prosper as a nation. Because we are doing by the book as we live. We know? But to be cast out mm -hmm. and to be trodden and to be trodden underfoot of men. And right now, the, our people have been cast out. Because right now, they are lost in the world. They don't keep the commandments. They don't want to hear not, nothing this Bible says this. We pray that the, the Lord will open their spirit and bring them into the truth. But it says, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Right now, our people out there, they are being trodden under foot of men. And as a nation, we are being trodden under foot of men. Why? Give me Isaiah 61 verse 23. Isaiah 61 verse 23. 51, 5 1. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Go ahead. Therefore, hear now this. No, 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 no. 51. 51, verse 23. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Go ahead. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, mm -hmm. which have said to thy soul, bow down, you see that, that we may go over. No, no. The soul. They've said to our soul. So it's not that we are literally on the floor. No. Spiritually we are on the floor. The nations are walking on top of us. So that means our spirit needs to be revived with the laws of God so, so that we can what? We can stand up manfully so the Lord can instruct us. Second Ezra 10 33. Give me that thing. Second Ezra 10 verse 33. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. You see that thing? Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. I'll counsel thee. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Isaiah 51, verse 23. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Mm -hmm. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, who have said to thy soul, Bow down. They have said to and our soul, Our soul. Our spirit, our soul, our spirit bow down. Remember, not only do they do, do we go to do we go to these nations for the want of all things, not not only for sex, for water and clothing. You no, know, it's not just for that. It's even the way we think. We depend on that. That's why it says in want of all things. He just put a vague statement. It's a blanket statement, but it goes deeper than just 
shelter, food, and raiment. No, it also includes your thought process. Now when it says bow, it says to your soul, bow down. Your spirit, your mind, the way you think, guess what? It's dictated by them if you're not in this book. They control the way you think. They control the things you say. That's what we read in the individual level. This mission is ever dictionary. It says the way they talk, they dress, they act is based on how they feel, how they what their wishes, and they stand up for their own opinion. And they don't care about what the nation, they only care about themselves. Do you? You understand? Love you. That's the mindset. Okay? That's why it says, you which have said to thy soul, bow down. Of course, that's what they've said to us. They've said to, they've they've said to our soul, bow down. And how do they do it? They use Christianity, politics, religion, entertainment, so on and so forth. Social media, that's how they said to us all, bow down. Okay, watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 18 real quick. Revelation 18. It just popped into my head. Revelation chapter 18 and verse... I just want to get to the point. Read verse 18. Revelation chapter 18 verse 13. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil mm -hmm. and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slave and souls of men. You see, you see that thing? These are the fruits of the land, by the way, that our enemies came and took in our presence. But what you want to notice here is that it says and slave, because they put us on slave ships and so on. You understand? It then it says, and souls of men. So why would you say slave? And then it says, and souls of men. What does that mean? Their mind. They control your thought process, how you think, what you think, the things you say, how you say them, what you eat, how you dress, where you live. You understand? Who you deal with, they dictate all of that. If you're not in this book. You understand? So that's why I go back to Isaiah 51 to 23. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Mm -hmm. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, right. which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. Mm -hmm. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground, right. and as the street to them that went over. You see that thing? Is that you have laid your body as the ground and then as the seed to them that went over. So when our, our brothers and sisters in the world, they just, they, they, they are controlled by the, the, the food they eat. You understand? How they conduct themselves. They think they do to themselves and to each other and so forth. Guess what? They, that's, that's how the nations are saying, bow down. They've said to their soul, bow down. Worship white Jesus. That's how they do it. When you when you celebrate Christmas, that's when they are, that's how they are saying, bow down that you may walk all over. You celebrate Mother's Day, that's exactly what they are saying. Father's Day, Women's Month. You see that thing? All of that goes into what? That's when they said to the, our soul, bow down that we may go over. Now we become a dormant. We just walk on top of us. You understand? Not only that, the black man has allowed the black woman to walk on top of him. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. What I mean by that is, now the black woman is worshipped by the black man. The black man is afraid to correct the black woman. Because he's afraid that the black woman is going to flip out. Because the, the society has taught the black woman to be loud and obnoxious and disrespectful. And when they do that, the black man is not going to say nothing. Not this black man right here. Not the Israelite man. The Israelite man will not bow down to no woman. Will not back down. Will not allow to allow themselves to be ruled by a woman. You know why? It's against nature. It's against nature. We are created on this earth to rule. Women are created for us to do what to submit and to support us. To execute the mission that we put out. You understand? To help us build the nation. Because we're not going to build the nation by ourselves. We need the women. 
You understand? We need the system. Okay. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. We're going to read through verse 5. Second Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abiah to reign over Judah. So Abiah, Abiah now is, is ruling over Judah now. Okay, go ahead. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abiah and Jeroboam. Remember now, this is after Solomon had died. Now, remember, Jeroboam had taken northern kingdom. He created two golden calves, one he put in Bethel, one he put in Dan, so that they don't have to go to Jerusalem to worship on the feast day. And he fired the Levites and put bugs up in there. Go ahead. And Abiah set the battle in array with the army of veteran men of war, mm -hmm. even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 men, with 800,000 chosen men, being mighty men of valor. Ray. And Abiah stood up upon Mount Zemarim, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. So now Abiah is going to set this whole thing in order. So what the hell is this? Because he said that, what business do we have to go to war with? You understand? Read. Or ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over to over Israel to David forever? You see, you see what he's saying? He says, I do not know that the most that God gave the kingdom over to Israel, over Israel to David forever, meaning what? Judah was always, always going to be the head tribe. You understand? They didn't want them. Okay. Read. Even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. You see that thing? By a covenant of salt. What was he saying? He was talking about the unity of the brethren. So that covenant of salt is talking about what? What is that kind of coaching business? Is. When he says, have salt in yourselves. Have salt among yourselves. You understand? Have peace one with another. So Abiah was saying, listen, we need to have peace. Why are you causing confusion for? Because guess what? Unity is how we're going to build the nation of Israel. Up. You understand? So now, I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end it with a video. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All right, uh, let's break bread. 1 Corinthians 11. In the honor of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. For laying his life down for the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take, eat. This is my body." Which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same and also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Before, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.